today we're going to do a walkthrough on how to install the high altitude jet in the Furman W2000i generator. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the screws here, 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 and here. That's five screws total. Once those screws are removed, I'm going to simply pull the panel out and then lift it and set it down out of my way. Before proceeding with the next steps, I want to make sure that the fuel is turned to off. And if your generator is warm, you're going to want to make sure that it's cooled off before you start to access the inside of the engine bay. Next, we're going to remove the air box here to give us better access to the carburetor. So I'm going to start by removing this screw right here. Once that screw is removed, the air box cover should be able to pull right off and we'll set that aside. Then we will pull the actual air filter out as well. And once again, set that aside. And then we've got a screw right here holding the air box housing in place. So far, I've only used a Phillips screwdriver uh, and this bolt is a 10 millimeter head. So I'm going to go ahead and start unscrewing it. And there's another 10 millimeter head right here that needs to be removed. <sighs> Once we have those out of the way, we can come in here and push this air tube, disconnect it from our box here, and we should be able to pull this out. Okay, now the air box is out, and we have good access to the carburetor here. Okay, once you're at this step, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take this drain hose and run it into a dish. Uh, just make sure it's below and then you can open this right here and it'll allow the fuel to drain out of this lower section. And then we can move forward and unscrew this bolt. Now I've got this little dish that I'm going to set underneath here. Uh, the next thing we need to do is come in here and we need to remove this bolt right here. And this is also a 10 millimeter as well. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And that fuel cap should come off. So I've loosened it a little and you can see it's dripping into my bowl here. It's not a bad idea to get some gloves on if you want to keep your hands protected from the gasoline. I'm going to kind of manually with my hand unscrew it there. Okay, I'm getting loose. So you got to think, once I turn my fuel off, I still have this entire fuel cap that is going to be full of fuel. So I'm going to lift that fuel cap up, I'm going to set it aside, take my bolt and set it aside. And we have access up under here. Once we're here, I will uh, I'll move this float up here and I'll show you. That right there is our main jet, so I'm going to get a flat blade screwdriver and unscrew that jet. 
I wanted to show you a quick close-up. The jet on the left is the OEM jet for sea level up to 3,000 feet. Since I live around 4,700 feet, I will be installing the one on the right, which is for 3,000 to 6,000 feet above sea level. So you, not a huge difference. Um, really, you, you almost can't tell with the naked eye, but the jet I'm putting in will be just a little bit smaller as there's not as much air to mix in with the air-fuel mixture. And here is a close-up of what the uh, what the hole looks like where I pulled the jet out. So now I'm going to go ahead and screw in the the new jet. Okay, and here you go. I'm going to tighten it up, and I just want it to be as close as I can get to where it felt when I was going in. So I'm going to tighten it with my hand. And I just want to be careful not to over tighten it and smash that that brass jet. So it is in there nice and snug. So now I'm going to reverse the process. Uh, you'll notice that when they send you the kit, uh, once you register your generator, they'll send you the kit for free. And they'll send you a new O-ring. Um, my generator is brand new. And I've already got an O-ring in there that I think is perfectly fine. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that, leave that installed in there. And then to, to undo it, basically reverse the process. So I'm going to put the fuel cap back on. I'm going to attach my housing here. Screw it back in in the two places. Put my air filter back on. Attach, put my cap back on the air filter there. And then I will turn my fuel on and test it out. As you're coming back together, you want to make sure that you route this fuel hose down into that hole. There's a overflow there. Okay, I've got this installed back, got those screws in. Uh, you can see on the fuel filter, there's the little marks where it was sitting on these little plastic holders and so I'm going to put it back in the same order as it was make sure it's in there and that the foam is not sticking out anywhere looks good okay and then I'll go ahead and get our air box mounted back up Okay, now before I go ahead and put the cover back on, I'm going to actually open the gas valve. I'm going to turn this on over here, and we're going to check and see if any fuel leaks out of here. If I see any leaks, I'm going to just kind of observe, check for leaks, and then I'm going to go ahead and actually start it and make sure that it'll run with that new jet in before I go ahead and put that put that cover back on so I don't have to waste my time if, if we did something wrong. Okay, I've now moved to a ventilated area and I'm gonna go through my normal start procedures that I would normally go through and see what we come up with. <laughs> I'm going to put this back cover back on and I will be good to go. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If this helped you out, please hit the uh, subscribe button, hit the like button, and feel free to share the video. Thanks for watching.